Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, well, what I'm going to present is the work we do with the communities, and I'm going to emphasize the local, the mainstreaming of the local, of the locals in the area. And basically, in some, what we do is that we assess climate risk and vulnerability, beginning from, this is what you call bottom up, beginning from the lower communities, and then keep integrating it. Then we integrate the, what we assess as risks and assessing risks, then we look at what is happening, we look at coping strategies, we look at uh, the long-term adaptation uh, opportunities and potentials. Then when we get that data, because we are a research institution, we, we integrate that with hardcore science in trying to see the option, the viable options that the farmers can take on. Then what happens later on that is in plan because it's still a work in progress is that we then do stakeholder workshops and give them feedback, presenting the different options that they can select from and then be able to take on something that they know that it is economically viable or profitable in, in their own way and then that will be adaptable and can be sustainable. So what I'm going to, to share with you right now is what we think are the, well, the success factors are more talked about almost from the time we started, but then what we think are also the missing gaps that we need to work on to be able to enable the, the mainstreaming to work better. Okay, the, some of the success factors is like people have hinted already, you know, is that, that the, the practices that farmers adopt are already providing benefits and those that are involved, things to do with agroforestry, soil and water conservation and these other many practices, meaning that therefore, even for those that haven't taken on, a, they see the benefit and therefore they can do it. There's also a realization that they, there's a need for partnerships. You can see this is a joint effort that cannot be done by one person. A research institute cannot do it. The, you know, the government cannot do it without the local. So there's that realization which is also the, the brings in the success. So then the other thing is that is that the, when, when the assessment is done, when the assessment of the risk, the climate risk and the, and the vulnerability is done, it is very important that the, the local people are involved. It's very important that it's participatory and then it is able to capture the priorities of the locals and their, and their preferences. And, and we've been discussing even in the, the parallel sessions that we ran previously that the, these subgroups, it is important that different subgroups are, in, uh, uh, are hard or they give their views, they give their preferences, they give what they think will work for them. And in doing that, being research, we, we combine, when we do that, we combine both the quantitative bit of the work, the science, you know, the, previously, someone would come and, and run a mega survey and be able to get all that and put it in a computer and get out of the results and decide on what to do next. But we will look at the quantitative, yes, but we still look at the social economic aspects of it, things like gender, things like, you know, the different levels that are in there. So we capture that when we do that assessment. And we think that as long as you do that, it's also, you are more certain that what you are doing will work than just sitting there and, and prescribing something. And I want to say here that yes, it works for the government people, it works. You can do it, you can work with the local communities, you can adopt these climate smart scenarios and, and options and the farmers can adapt something that they know is profitable because you know farmers are going to balance their, their economic needs, their food security, so they're not going to take on anything that you just prescribe. So when you include them, we see that it breeds results for that. Then in terms of Creating sustainability and addressing, addressing issues of overdependence, uh, we also have seen that the, it is very important to include the different institution levels. The different institutional levels, it from national, there are different players, there are different institutions, the, the, the in place, and all those people, you need to consider that even from the beginning. Not like thinking like we can add them, or maybe we can consult them. They can come on at a later stage. From the beginning, you launch the program, try and capture the different levels, and who is doing what, and, and map out their roles. Then they, they create, create ownership, and still people are held accountable when they participate in, such, in that way. 
But these are some of the challenges that need to be overcome that we have found even as we, we do the work, is that the, there's a need to make institutions work effectively. And these institutions, they could be the different levels, they could be the policies in place, they need to work. In the majority of times, you find that sometimes we need the right policies. But even when the right policies are in, are in place, the conducive policies, there's still need to ensure that they are working, they are functioning, in other words. And we have found in the majority of times that the policies are there, the instruments are there, but they are not functional. So they need to be, they need to function somehow. And so enforcement is very important that they function. So that is still a gap that we find. And then there is a need to integrate vertically, locally to national level, and then horizontally, purposes of informing. You find a scenario where, where you know, uh, things are happening. Uh, for example, the National Forestry Authority, where we come from, we have the National Forestry Authority. They may be doing something. The National Environment Management Authority is doing another thing. There's no coordination. There's no, you know, there's no cross-learning, no cross-fertilization, no nothing. So everybody is just, the thing is compartmentalized. Everyone is independent. So there's every need to have the, the, the the communication and effective feedback from the lower levels to the upper levels, and then that is vertical integration, but there's also need for horizontal coordination so that people can work together and know what is happening. Probably it could even reduce the replication of resources and effort. Then another thing, ah, there's a need to deal with political interference. I think we find that there's political interference, political interference might, might manifest as disregard of the law, because they are the politicians, the ones in control, they are in power, so they are not going to they disregard the law and do the way they want it. It might manifest as conflict of interest where politicians and, and the leaders and the elite are doing it their way, you know. They are not doing what is supposed to be done. And unfortunately, the systems are in place. We find that the policy structures are there. You find policy, there's a policy, there are acts, there are regulations, there are, you know, many things in different names but they are being overridden by conflict of interest. Nobody pays attention. So we think that there's a need to do that and then so that the good governance also can be there. People can be held accountable. And this is going to be a joint effort for every one of us. And uh, probably the donors need to speak more because they control the funds. They, they know they have the money. So if they said something, probably others can, can can, pay, can give a positive response to that. But I think there's a need to, to manage the political interference uh, if, if this local adaptation is going to happen. But there is a willingness, there's commitment, the local people, and, the, and what we find is that they really, when you do this risk assessment, they do it. They know how to do it. They can appraise their problems. They can give you the coping strategies. They know what should work and what may not, is not likely to work. So I want to say that these things can work but it's just patch up, patching up a few things that are, are limiting and redressing the way we do things. Thank you very much.